U-turn there. Starting to wonder whether he may have a place in mind. Oh, making a left turn, a little traffic there, but he has the green. Waited for that traffic to clear, making that left turn, and now speeding through another residential neighborhood. Now going uh, northbound, northbound on Walker Avenue. Northbound on Walker off of Florence. I count a total of, uh, I think, seven Bell Gardens police officers who are engaged in this pursuit. Now heading away from Bell Gardens again. So really just weaving his way through town here. I don't recall, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, some folks definitely aware of this pursuit in the neighborhood coming out with their cell phones. Another right onto Gage Avenue. This is definitely territory that we have covered before. Uh, and I, I want to say it's almost uh, his third time doing a giant loop through here. Again, coming up on the 710, over the 710 freeway. This is clearly a joyride at this point once again another right turn yeah, yeah i think we have been down here before interesting we've got a couple of units actually ahead of him here which may provide law enforcement for the opportunity to uh attempt a spike strip attempt it's a possibility i think he is actually in uh he might be back in Bell Gardens jurisdiction. I'm not quite sure. But he's making another left turn here. If he establishes a pattern here, uh, they may have an opportunity to go ahead with a spike strip. But for the time being, these turns appear to be fairly random. Now back on Eastern Avenue. I think we have been on Eastern as well. Here comes a red light. Three. Stopped. We didn't really stop, but slowed down. S saw there was no traffic and has now blown through two red lights in a row. And the driving is getting a little more dangerous here, a little more desperate as he appears intent on getting away from these officers. It just doesn't appear that Bell Gardens is going to give him much distance to play with. A third red light here just in the last 30 seconds. Once again, we are in the city of Bell Gardens, right where this all began, and uh, very likely in the vicinity, at least, of, uh, of his neighborhood, or at least an area that he appears much more familiar with. As we ventured out into other parts of Southgate and East LA, he uh, was uh, not quite as, uh, not quite as zippy as he is here in his comfort zone, which appears to be Bell Gardens, where it all started, and that is the agency that is leading this pursuit. Bell Gardens Police continuing this pursuit, now making a right turn onto Garfield Avenue, back on another major.
Coming up, uh, was that Firestone? Yeah, Firestone. He had the opportunity to get on Firestone there, maybe head back towards the freeway, and he clearly bypassed that opportunity. So he's southbound on Garfield Avenue, again, still in the city limits of Bell Gardens. Another red light waiting for cross traffic here. They're yielding. He's continuing through. This is where those lights and sirens really uh, help maintain public safety because when other motorists approach even a green light and hear those sirens going off, at the very least they slow down. In this case, they had the opportunity to come to a full stop and let this pursuit fly past them. Uh, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's picking up some speed here as he travels southbound on Garfield Avenue. Blowing through a number of red lights just in the last few minutes. Is that driver's side window still down? And this may be uh, one of those Bell Gardens officers relieving the other one. I couldn't tell, is this still the primary unit right behind him there? Right through another red light there, continuing southbound on Garfield. It's going to be coming up on the 105 freeway here in the next uh, half mile or so. It'll be interesting to see if he continues going south or decides to jump on the freeway again. Uh, that is something that he's done a couple of times. Again, to reiterate, we've done a few loops through Bell Gardens and into the East LA area, Southgate at one point, Huntington Park we've been to. Uh, this time he's continuing a little further south than we've been in, uh, in, in a little while. So the 105 freeway right off our nose. And you'll notice very little traffic on a Friday night. Ooh, had the, that was a green he had there. Look at that. One of those Bell Gardens officers ahead of him. When I see that, I'm always looking for that spike, spike strip, just in case they've been able to get units in place. Again, we're approaching the 105 freeway and taking that right on-ramp. He's making that right, taking the on-ramp onto the westbound 105, perhaps, or staying on the service road. Looks like he may be staying on the service road. Is it the westbound? Oh no, he's gonna get back on the freeway. He's gonna get back on the north, uh, back on the 710 North, I think. Is that gonna put him on the 710? No, he, he no, he pulled over. He pulled, he, so he, he, he pulled over to the left. He's committing to the westbound 105 freeway. He had a choice there. He could have gone on the 710 North or westbound 105. He decided to stick with the 105. Now getting into the Compton area as we continue westbound under the 710 and the pursuit continues away from Bell Gardens. Once again, you can see Bell Gardens police still in pursuit, even though we are now back on another freeway, back on the 105 this time. He's been through here as well at one point going right through Linwood and uh, getting off at Atlantic earlier before doing, I think, three or now four loops uh, through this part of town. But uh, in any event, he is now committed to the westbound 105 freeway. And 
not really going too, too fast. What does our real-time speed tracker say? Yeah, right around 70 miles per hour. Not too bad. Once again, to recap, if you're joining us on abc7.com and our ABC7 app, if you happen to be watching on your cell phone, now would be a good opportunity to uh, jump over to the big big screen and download our ABC7 uh, TV app. That's available on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, and Google. And uh, you'll be able to follow along as we continue to fly over this pursuit. Started in Bell Gardens upwards of about 40 minutes ago. Uh, at least 40 minutes ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. We are now on the 105 freeway after traversing the streets of uh, southeast L.A. and uh, over towards uh, east L.A. at some parts and then back into the Bell Gardens jurisdiction before ending up back on another freeway. Again, we are westbound on the 105, passing Wilmington Avenue, past Compton now, picking up a little bit of speed too, upwards of about 80 miles per hour as Bell Gardens police continue this pursuit. Unclear what the driver is wanted for, but it must have been something gnarly because he's got a full six or seven Bell Gardens police officers right behind him, not giving him much room to play with, and they have been really applying pressure. Look at that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I count nine black and whites right behind them with their lights and sirens on. Some of that may be CHP, unclear, but one or two of those uh, might be California Highway Patrol. That's the LA County Sheriff's Department helicopter with their night sun on them, providing some light down below as he continues this pursuit away from Bell Gardens, which seems to be the area that he has been most familiar with and almost looked like he may uh, be well known in that area as they came out and uh, were taking pictures at some time at some points uh, Residents clearly aware of this pursuit in the Bell Gardens area But again to reiterate we are now heading away from Bell Gardens westbound on the 105 past Avalon Coming up on the 110 freeway has the opportunity to get on the 110 or he can continue out towards the coast on the 105 freeway. We'll see what he decides to do. He's hugging those right two lanes, and uh, and he might be getting onto the northbound 110 here. Yeah, northbound 110, getting onto the Harbor Freeway as Bell Gardens continues. It'll be very interesting to see if they decide to hand this off to CHP. CHP has been monitoring this pursuit for the duration of, of, uh, of, of this whole thing and uh, LA County Sheriff's Department as well. Actually, uh, looks like he's getting onto the southbound side. So he bared over to the right and is getting onto the southbound 110 freeway. Southbound 110. Southbound 110, very little traffic on the 110 as far as I could tell. A little bit more traffic on the northbound side, but he's got those southbound lanes uh, really all to himself for the most part.
getting off again, exiting the 110 freeway. Looks like it's going to put him on El Segundo Boulevard. And here we go. He's got a decision to make, left or right. He's going to make a right turn and head westbound on El Segundo Boulevard. So westbound El Segundo was picking up speed on the freeway here. We'll see if he uh, continues to push it as he is, uh, really appears to have no intention of pulling over. So it may come down to how much gas is left here. The driving has been fairly composed, although reckless for sure, um, and dangerous to say the least when he runs through these red lights. He just blows right through them. Uh, he slows down for them, but he just continues on. About 55 miles per hour on El Segundo Boulevard. Another red light here, and actually hit a green light. Caught the green at Budlong and uh, is continuing westbound El Segundo. So uh, it'll be curious here, Rob, if, if we see any of those other jurisdictions joining the pursuit. Uh, I counted a, a couple of more joining when we were on the freeway there. I had a feeling that might have been California Highway Patrol, but I know we have at least six or seven Bell Gardens police officers who are still heavily engaged here, and uh, they are code three with their lights and sirens in hot pursuit of this blue Suzuki. How many? Two. Two Sheriff's Department helicopters over this pursuit. And we know of at least two people in that car. We've got the driver, a passenger in the front passenger seat. That left rear window is partially rolled down. Haven't been able to get a real good look at the back seat yet. Uh, but at least two people, at least two subjects in that car. Uh, and you can't help but uh, notice once again just how empty the road is here. Uh, wide open El Segundo Boulevard with very little traffic in his way. That trend continues all the way out uh, towards El Segundo. As we look out towards the LAX area, you can see Manhattan Beach, El Segundo off in the distance, and uh, really not a whole lot of traffic for uh, this time of a Friday night. He's been pretty lucky with the lights. Again, when he gets to a red light, occasionally he just blows right through them. He slows down and continues on. No real care here. Um, up on Crenshaw. Right turn, right turn on Crenshaw. Going northbound now. Right turn, back on the freeway. And back on the freeway. Back on the 105 freeway, in fact. It's been on the 105 a couple times. This will put him back in the eastbound direction, back towards, uh, back towards Bell Gardens eventually. Saw that helicopter flying through the shot here. Again, two LA County Sheriff's helicopters overhead as this pursuit continues back on the 105 freeway. A uh, little more traffic now on the eastbound side of the 105. I'm sure he'll just weave his way through here, but we'll see if he maintains these speeds. He's really not doing uh, much over the speed limit here. Again, very composed driving. 
for a majority of this pursuit, even though he's run through a few red lights. He uh, is not driving too erratically, just trying to get away from the cops, and it'll be quite interesting to figure out eventually what the original want was uh, and why they decided to initiate this pursuit and continue uh, to, uh, to track it the way they have been. One's got to wonder uh, just what he did to get their attention. Getting over to the left now, picking up a little speed. Look what time it is. One minute. Minute away, copy that. Thank you very much, appreciate it, Dave. You too. My, how time flies, man, this is, uh, it's already been almost an hour and a half. One hour, thank you. Hour of fuel, Carper. That's right, Mark. We are eastbound on the 105. As you mentioned, this is a pursuit that was initiated in the city of Bell Gardens. Bell Gardens police chasing this suspect through Bell Gardens into South LA at times doing complete loops through the Southgate area and in towards the city of Commerce through industrial areas, residential neighborhoods, not doing extreme speeds or very erratic driving, pretty composed for the most part, and very little freeway time, although we are back on the 105 after getting on the 710 a couple times. We're heading back in that general direction and that is the trend that we have been seeing here as he continues to make his way apparently back home. We don't know where this vehicle is registered, what the original want is, or where he resides, but this continues to magically make its way back into Bell Gardens repeatedly and that is the agency that is right behind him. California Highway Patrol monitoring this pursuit and so is the uh, LA County Sheriff's Department. In fact, they have two helicopters overhead here. We don't know what the initial want is Mark, but we know that at least one or two weapons were thrown out of the vehicle. They have been retrieved and we just uh, are waiting to find out w how all of this started, but clearly there is a serious crime involved here. Otherwise, I just don't think they would be going to these lengths to catch this suspect. Again, we've got about six to eight black and whites right behind him here and we know of at least two people inside this car. The window is heavily tinted, the driver's side window rolled down, but we haven't gotten a real good look except for a very brief second where we could clearly make out that the, the driver at least was uh, very apparently wearing a face mask. So 
uh, practicing safe pursuit practice here, but uh, again, just very, very peculiar, and we'll just have to wait and see what the original want is here and how much gas is left in this tank, Mark. Yeah, it's a blue Suzuki sedan. Uh, pretty, uh, yeah, it's a compact car. Can't get the exact make and model, and we uh, don't know whether it's his or not, uh, whether it's stolen or otherwise. But we know that as we made our way down certain neighborhoods through certain residential streets in Bell Gardens, uh, some folks were coming out and uh, taking pictures with their cell phones, almost indicating that maybe they know who he is or maybe he's familiar with that area. Certainly appears to be my suspicion, uh, but we'll have to wait and again find out for sure whether he is uh, from Bell Gardens or whether it was just the crime that was committed was in Bell Gardens. Looks like he may be showing signs of getting off of the 105 freeway now maybe getting back on the 710. So he's jumping off the 105, and I think this could put him on the northbound, oh, maybe a northbound transition onto the 710 freeway. Sure enough, uh, this is something that he has done a couple of times already as he now makes his way onto the 710 freeway. On the left-hand side of your screen, this is gonna be some of the heaviest traffic that we have seen during the entirety of this pursuit, which I should mention, is now going on almost two hours. This has been almost two hours that they have been in pursuit. You see Bell Gardens right behind them and a couple of CHP units already on the freeway, possibly anticipating his entry onto the freeway, and now he's actually picking up some speed as well. The speeds have not been very excessive uh, for, for the most part, but he is definitely picking up speeds. He's all over the paint and uh, clearly desperate to get away from these Bell Gardens police officers. Wow. He's on a service. He's on a service road, and I think yeah, he's getting uh, onto Imperial. Sure enough, getting onto Imperial is going to make a right turn, and that'll put him on the eastbound. Uh, or actually, yeah, no, he's actually getting onto the westbound side. That's a ramp that'll put him onto the westbound 90. Uh, getting onto Imperial Highway here. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think eight or nine cars now behind him with their lights and sirens on. Some of those may be CHP. Uh, I can't confirm that for sure. But again, at least six or seven Bell Gardens police officers who have not been playing around. They have uh, left very little distance between them and the suspect. Uh, and it's interesting to hear that vandalism is the want here because it just seems like a whole lot of dangerous, uh, dangerous, uh, it's a dangerous pursuit for no matter what the crime is. Uh, but certainly the fact that those guns were tossed out of the vehicle certainly is uh, of major concern to law enforcement. Again, LAPD tracking this as well as the LA County Sheriff's Department and the California Highway Patrol. We are now in, I believe, uh, I believe in county territory, but getting into Bell Gardens once again, uh, if he continues in this direction. At the moment, it appears to be Bell Gardens exclusively. There were a few more uh, black and whites on the freeway, perhaps CHP uh, tracking it as well. But uh, there are two helicopters overhead. Those are LA County Sheriff's Department helicopters. I'm told one of them is about to break off for a second pursuit in the South LA area. So we may be dealing with a secondary pursuit, uh, but for the time being, we're following this one and they have the luxury of having two helicopters at the ready here. Uh, the, as he continues now northbound on Atlantic Avenue. This is again, territory that we have covered previously in this pursuit. And once again, it's worth reiterating, he is getting closer to Bell Gardens, which again has been the, the area that he appears to be most comfortable with.
Yeah, it's interesting. They've had a couple of opportunities. I was almost surprised earlier that they didn't try it. I'm not exactly certain if Bell Gardens police officers are pit certified, but there certainly was the opportunity where I thought they might give it a go ahead. Uh, and at times, even establishing a pattern through Bell Gardens where there were officers ahead of him, and I thought maybe even a spike strip might be in their future. But in any event, they have not been able to establish that, and they are... Uh, we have not seen any uh, any any uh, pit maneuver or any pit maneuver attempts at all. But what we have seen is a, a slightly more dangerous uh, tone here, just since we've been on the air. And I say that only because he's been a little bit more erratic and a little bit faster through residential neighborhoods, and also blowing through these red lights without any regard. He slows down hits a little bit of cross traffic, lets them yield, or sometimes they yield for him, and he just blows right through the red light. Bell Gardens police going right through the red light with him. You saw a crowd of people almost anticipating this outside of the, the their house there. That might, might have been completely random, but at times earlier on in the pursuit, in this very neighborhood, we're now in Cudahy, but in this area where he would travel these residential neighborhoods, and folks are well aware of this pursuit, and they are coming out to catch a glimpse with their cell phones. So, again, it's going to be interesting to see just how much uh, gas is left in the tank here. We we know this has been going on for, at the very least, about two, two and a half hours. Yeah, somebody, um, yeah, it almost looks like somebody, one of those passerbys threw something at the vehicle, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what I saw there. But now he's coming up on uh, Florence, going right through Florence, continuing northbound uh, Wilcox in Bell on the east side of the 710 freeway. I'll be looking to see if he attempts to make any of these right turns. If he gets on the other side of the 710, that'll put him squarely back in Bell Gardens territory and again in the vicinity of where all of this started a couple of hours ago. You mentioned vandalism, the, the original one here. Clearly they were armed and they may very well still be armed. We know that at least one, maybe two firearms were tossed out. They were recovered and who knows what else is left in the vehicle. I can tell you that there are two people in there in the front. We don't know whether there's anybody in the back seat. Only two people confirmed at this point, a driver, a passenger. At one point, the passenger gesturing out the passenger side window. Here comes that right turn that I was talking about. He's making a right turn onto Gage. That is another road that we have been on uh, several times earlier on in this pursuit. So eastbound on Gage Avenue, coming up on the 710 freeway and now heading right back into Bell Gardens. Right. That, look at that. Look at that. Yep. Yeah, wild. This is, and this is the area that we were talking about earlier where he appears to either know people here or they know him. People here in this neighborhood well aware of this police pursuit and trying to engage with this subject. Again, they're tossing things at him. They may not like him the way he tossed that. Yeah. 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 That was a hard throw, too. Uh, not sure what uh, what that object was, but you can see there are groups of people uh, uh, just a every few blocks here that have come outside to partake in this and catch a glimpse, sometimes just taking pictures, and now twice in the last minute we've seen people throwing things at this car. So a little bit bizarre. Not sure I've seen that in quite some time, but uh, he is weaving his way through Bell Gardens, now on Florence Avenue, making that left turn, going to be on the eastbound side uh, heading eastbound on Florence and slowing down a little bit here. Uh, you mentioned that the driving has not been very er erratic or excessively high speeds, but it has been dangerous, and we've certainly seen him blow through a number of red lights. Fortunately, so far, we have not seen any pedestrians out tonight. 
many people crossing the street and really hasn't been a whole lot of traffic. Here's another glimpse that we're getting of the driver. He's got a mask You can on. see he's wearing that face mask and uh, just uh, continuing his joyride this evening through Bell Gardens. Taking coronavirus precautions while breaking the law. This is, uh, this is odd, but, you know, this is... This is L.A., so things yeah, happen. only in L.A. Right. It's one of those stories. Look at this. You, you were right about the number of police vehicles. One, two, three, four, Seven, five, eight, six. Yeah. Uh, I at think least, I counted yeah. eight there, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe those are all Bell Gardens police officers, although now we are getting back on the freeway here, so we'll see if that changes. Again, California Highway Patrol has been monitoring this. It is... Uh, it is, it's basically up to Bell Gardens Police whether they want to hand this off or maintain their status as the lead agency. And so far, uh, it's, they're showing no signs of giving it up. They want this. This is theirs. And uh, they're going to take this guy in. It appears they have no, no intention of just handing it off. A lot of times with less serious uh, crimes and misdemeanors and the like, you see them hand it off to uh, uh, you know, a neighboring agency or the CHP on the freeway. Uh, but in this case, uh, we really don't. Uh, we really don't know uh, why. Exa I'm sorry. Stand by one second, Mark. All right, we're watching him heading Cut. northbound on the 710 freeway, the Long Beach freeway, which during the day, this stretch of road, at this, uh, you know, on a normal uh, afternoon, would be filled with trucks leaving the the harbor, leaving the port of Long Beach. Now, of course, this time of night, 11:15, it is virtually empty. Uh, passenger vehicles out there and that's basically it and this one pursuit vehicle this one Suzuki sedan blue in color with two people at least inside one weapon has been tossed out the original reason for the uh, the interaction with police is suspicion of vandalism uh, and the the weapon adds a whole new dimension to that it is uh, much more serious when you have that involved. These could be felons. These could be, uh, they could have just committed a crime. They could have uh, been on their way to commit a crime. And uh, they've got to bring this person in. So we're going to see uh, where this takes us. Uh, now still on the 710 North, uh, Atlantic Boulevard, Atlantic Bandini uh, area. Passing what looks like, oh, yeah. they've got a traffic break there, right? Or is that an accident? Yeah, actually, you're right. Yeah, that construction actually has uh, part of the freeway shut down. He's uh, blown right past a couple of construction sites. Now getting off the 710 freeway onto Atlantic Boulevard, back in the eastbound direction. Look at this, going into, uh, making, a, making a left, making a left, uh, or a U-turn, rather. I stand correct, making a U-turn. Looks like he may want to get back on the freeway. Uh, that construction may have gotten in his way, uh, but he's now going uh, the opposite way. Does he go under the freeway? We'll see yep. here. This is, again, an area that we have been in before. This is all uh, freeway that he has covered previously in this pursuit, at times making it all the way uh, into the city of Commerce, which is about where we are now. You see those FedEx trucks, lots of uh, warehouses and uh, industrial complexes in this area. But we're now going westbound on Atlantic Boulevard. Something tells me uh, that he is finding some form of entertainment with this. It just doesn't appear that he has a clear destination in mind. Just kind of taking police along for the joyride on a Friday night through the streets of uh, Bell Gardens and neighboring municipalities here as he continues uh, just past uh, just past Third Street. Back in the Cudahy area is where we are. All right, now on surface streets, and of course, whenever one of these gets on the surface streets and gets off the freeways, it adds that dimension of cross traffic, other vehicles, pedestrians uh, that could be in the way and could potentially uh, cause a problem here. Uh, and he has, as we've seen, run through red lights, although he's got green lights in his direction at this moment. Uh, the speed's not excessive, as you're seeing. Our SkyMap technology keeping track of the surface uh, of the speed of this vehicle, 41 miles an hour now. The, the speed limit down there is probably 35. So uh, not excessive speeds. And at the moment, the great good fortune of having green lights in his favor. But things can change, and they often do. And we're going to yeah, keep just, an eye on this. Go ahead. Just in the last few minutes, I mean, since we've been on the air, he has basically done an entire another loop here just east of the 710 freeway. Again, we're no, now going southbound on Atlantic, slowing down here. Okay, continuing on. At one point earlier in the pursuit, I should mention, uh, it really looked like 
just based on experience, it kind of seemed like they were about to dump the vehicle, or at the very least, it looked like the passenger was showing signs of maybe jumping out and, and taking off. The, the passenger side door popped open for a brief moment and then closed again, and then the pursuit continued, and we still have at least, at the very least, that driver and passenger in the front, unclear whether there's anybody in the back, but there have been moments in this pursuit where you almost had the, the feeling that they were about to either give up or at least drop off that passenger. In the meantime, he's now gotten off of Atlantic, back onto Gage, which we were on just a couple of minutes right. ago. This time we're going in the westbound direction. But it just, uh, it just appears that he is going to use up all the gas in this tank before most likely, uh, probably, hopefully, peacefully giving himself up. Right. Uh, and so we haven't seen any sorts of aggressive moves from the pursuing officers. No attempt that we have seen at a pit maneuver. You said, as you pointed out earlier, that there have been several opportunities for a spike strip, especially, you know, when the fact, the fact that he's doing these loops and coming back into the same neighborhoods. Um, so they're not doing that. Uh, they may be content to let him just keep going until he runs out of gas. That's maybe the safest option, given the fact that the speeds are not excessive. He's not going into oncoming traffic, and the risk this might of this be a pursuit dead end. is limited. It's a T, okay, it's a T, it's a T intersection. I thought that might be a dead end that he was coming up on. He's really just kind of weaving through this residential neighborhood now as he uh, continues. Look at that. More look at that. folks. Somebody else threw uh, something at him. Yeah. Looked like they threw uh, a water uh, uh, bottle at him. Yep. Yep. It's, it's incredible. It's funny because how do they know? I mean, granted, he's kind of, well, I guess it just really speaks to the, the pattern that he's been able to establish here mm -hmm. because even the people oh. that are at home watching this know that it's coming their way. They mm -hmm. must be watching on their cell phones. It has to be the case um, that they are watching and uh, tracking this pursuit because they seem to be well aware that he is uh, coming into their neighborhood in advance of his arrival, enough to gather in groups and gather objects to throw at him. Yeah. Very unusual, very peculiar, something we don't see very often. But in this case, these folks on a Friday night appear to uh, want to get involved here and take part in this pursuit. In the meantime, he seems to be enjoying it and just taking police along for the ride here back on Florence Avenue. We are traveling westbound on Florence, this time away from Bell Gardens. Mm -hmm. But if we, well, there he goes around uh, around that car at the intersection there. Again, we've seen him with no hesitation blowing through red lights. Occasionally, he'll do what he did right there, but it's been very rare that we see him do things like getting into oncoming lanes of traffic or that kind of thing. Um, and he's not going excessively fast, although just above the speed limit to be sure. Uh, but you can see still all eight of those Bell Gardens police officers St uh, staying right behind him. You know, this is if this was an LAPD's jurisdiction, for example, we might see two or three mm -hmm. that would take a, a, you know, that would keep up with him for this long. You're talking about a two, two and a half hour long pursuit at this point. Uh, this is a good chunk of Bell Gardens resources that are now outside of the city of Bell Gardens uh, following along in this pursuit with their lights and sirens on. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I, I wanted to point out, too, that as he made that right turn onto Florence, uh, I am almost positive I saw an attempt at a spike strip. It was visible for about a second, maybe a little less, yeah, in the bottom right corner of our screen as he made that, uh, as he made that right turn. There he's, there's the guy. There's a very clear shot of the guy behind the wheel. He's got on a baseball cap, turned backwards. He's got his mask on. The mask now pulled down. Um, got some long sleeve dark shirt, and you can you could see his passenger there as well. Um, but they did apparently try to do a, a spike strip. It never got close to the vehicle. Um, it's tough, you know. Sp yeah. Spike strips, when you see them successful, it's 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 it requires a bit of luck and mm -hmm. a lot of skill. But uh, very hard, even when they do establish a pattern, very hard to execute. Although they do have the lack of traffic. In their advantage here this evening, there has not been a whole lot of traffic either on the surface streets or on the freeway for that matter. For the most part, he has had most of these roads completely to himself. And if they wanted to try a spike, st a spike strip, there's been several points where we've seen them at least in position ahead of him at 
intersections awaiting his arrival, but I hadn't seen any until you mentioned that one right there. We may have seen our first spike attempt there, but clearly, uh, if it was a spike attempt, it was a failed attempt at that because he has not uh, been debilitated in any way whatsoever. Yeah, well, we're uh, watching it continue here. It occurs to me, you know, people throwing stuff at this guy, they may, may know him, they may not, but maybe they're just tired of seeing this, you know, they're tired of criminals. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's enough. Just that people don't want to see uh, somebody going through their neighborhood uh, and breaking the law and causing this kind of havoc. Maybe that's just enough, but because uh, it's more than one person who has thrown something at this car. Uh, some people, of course, are, are, you know, just there to record it with their, their cell phones, but uh, others are, are really deciding to, uh, to take action. Yeah, and now we're a little bit of a ways away from that neighborhood where we saw that bottle being thrown, but still in the vicinity as we enter Bell, I think, or maybe back in Cudahy as we continue westbound. But uh, they appear to be uh, tracking this on their cell phones and probably really uh, able to anticipate the arrival based on the number of sirens. You have about seven or eight sirens blaring oh. through these neighborhoods. He's now the suspect His coming to a complete stop. Look at this. Look at this. What was that? He, okay, the keys just came out. Just, yeah, Cookies. he, he came to a out. full stop, randomly came to a full stop in Florence the middle of the intersection. Front. You got to wonder what the gas situation is for him to randomly come to a stop in the middle of the intersection, East Florence Avenue and Santa Fe Avenue, as Bell Gardens Police gets ready to attempt a felony stop. The driver and passenger with their arms out the windows. The vehicle appears to be off, or at the very least, it looks like he threw a set of keys out the window, as you mentioned, on a, on a, on a long oh. lanyard there. There's a and, canine unit uh, at the bottom of the screen. Are they going to use that? And the dogs are ready. Yep. Yep. That's a and German he's shepherd. ready just in case. Can't wait to, to get at these guys. We'll see if that's going to be required. If uh, they comply, the dog will not be required. Uh, they appear like the to be ready to comply thing. with those orders just based on uh, what we're seeing here. We're going to loosen it up just a little bit because you just never know. At this point of a pursuit termination is really the most dangerous, uh, the most dangerous seconds of an ordeal like this because you just don't know what the situation is inside the vehicle. You don't have a real great idea of the intentions of the driver, the state of mind. And we already know that at least one or two firearms have been tossed mm -hmm. out the window. So it looks like the driver, driver is stepping out of the vehicle per instructions of Bell Gardens police, slowly opening the door, stepping out of the vehicle, and his arms and hands are clearly visible as he backs up with his hands on his head, stepping towards them and following their each and every command. Right. Uh, which is very smart because he's got about eight guns trained on him plus a dog. So yeah, it's doing, the best you could hope for. Yeah. You know the potential is always so dangerous, and this could go sideways in a number of different ways. It was just hours ago that we saw a wild pursuit earlier today mm -hmm. uh, where you had a suspect you know, attempting to carjack other vehicles and, and endanger other lives. In this case, it does appear that the joyride has come to an end and the driver is now peacefully giving himself up. Next order of business will be taking that passenger into custody. They will then clear the back seat of the vehicle, but at this point it looks like just the driver and the passenger. This pursuit now coming to a full end here uh, in Southgate. All right, well the driver's in custody. Now they're going to get the passenger and with any luck it's going to go the same way. And as you mentioned, they'll clear the car, and that'll be it. But we are very close to the end of this. You see the, uh, and this is at the intersection again of Santa Fe and, uh, what is it? Uh, Santa Fe and Florence Avenue, right on the edge of uh, Huntington Park and, uh, and Southgate, I would mm -hmm. say. Okay. And so far, the news is good. One suspect in custody. Nobody's been hurt. There have been no accidents that we know of during this pursuit either. He didn't hit anybody, didn't sideswipe anybody. So uh, this is about the best way that this could end. Suspect number two coming out. Also has a mask on, looks like. And, uh, and complying looks like with he's the got it. Yep, yep, hands on his head. Stepping away from the vehicle. Back in their direction. They will 
peacefully take him into custody and uh, in uh, short order give the code four. Hopefully once they clear that vehicle, they'll attempt to pop the trunk here uh, after they take him into custody and make sure there's nobody else inside that car. But a two and a half hour, some almost three hours maybe, pursuit. I don't have the exact time of when it started, but a lengthy pursuit to say the least coming to an end here in Southgate. All right, and we'll, you know, hopefully we'll get some more information about uh, the, the crime that may be involved here. We know they were wanted for uh, alleged vandalism, <clears throat> but there was at least one weapon was thrown out of the window uh, during the pursuit. That weapon was recovered. So there's more to this than just vandalism, and hopefully we'll find out what that is. But this looks like it's over, and uh, both suspects are in custody. Nobody hurt. And we move on to the rest of tonight's news that we can get to at 11 p.m. Is it lights out for parties in Southern California? L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti's threat to cut power on pandemic crashers going into effect tonight. Plus, President Trump warning he'll wield executive power.